The first thing to know about City Girl Farm is that it's not actually a farm. Ah, uh, but it does yield something you might find in a barnyard, and no, it's not a cow. The City Girl Farm is a place from which chicken footstools emerge. And they don't go for chicken feed either. They're serious pieces of fiber art, probably best described simply by showing you. I'm really um, in the finishing process of this chicken, just going around and making all the final passes. Um, and mom is working on basting on her chicken and making sure everything's covered. Oh, and you've got a head on. Great. Yep, poultry parts. Being, for lack of a better term, upholstered. Inside a small storefront just west of the Country Club Plaza by the mother-daughter team that's at the heart of the City Girl Farm. Mom gets a lot of credit for being involved from birth on <laughs> creatively. Uh, so yeah, I grew up on a farm in central Kansas in Lyons, and um, I was given the gift of chickens, I think sometime in middle school. And so I had a lot of happy childhood chicken experiences and loved collecting the eggs and just watching them around the farm. and. I think they're so ridiculous and quirky and unique, each chicken, that they make me feel better about my own quirks and uniquenesses. The story moves on to Sally's graduate studies at Kansas State, where she majored in interior architecture. Inspired by the French artist Francois Lalonde's sheep footstools, she introduced a product of her own. Penny and Penny were the result of a semester of designing how to um, how to make a chicken, what's the essence of a chicken, what parts need to be there. And I was honestly just hoping that they would stand up. <laughs> they stood, and an idea was hatched, sorry, teaming one newly minted college graduate with her mom's skills at the spinning wheel and her father's abilities to build. The first chickens were white and basic. They sold, so did the next batch, and the next as have the increasingly not found in nature varieties which continue to emerge. We create our own rule. We'll look at each other and we're like, there's nobody to ask. We have to solve this and we may do it wrong. We may do it right. And we're, we're just have taken that risk. One of the first shows we went to, there was somebody that looked in our booth and they said, are you taxidermist? They looked at it, they knew it was a chicken, their minds told them. Then the second later they realized, oh, well, there's no chickens that big running around any farmyard. But it was the scale of it that she created that I think made it real, but yet they knew they weren't real. So it was a real play on, you know, their, what their mind and their eyes were telling them at the same time. Our goal is always to create a chicken but the way that we get to the end result is always changing based on the fiber, based on the feather making processes, and then what we, uh, what we pin on the chicken and how we decide to stitch it. So far, the roughly 500 chickens that have gone out the door have at least one thing in common. They're sturdily constructed with bronze legs and beaks and a solid wooden egg at the core. They are, after all, footstools. Expensive footstools that take weeks to create. People will say, I wouldn't buy this and put my feet up on it. And, or they ask us, do people use it that way? And we're like, we really have no idea. It's up to them, you know, but they are engineered as a footstool. And the, and the price is, you know, reflects that. We did recognize kind of a couple years ago that these chickens were going to some pretty cool homes. <laughs> and I was, I was starting to get a little jealous. There's one we know of that, that has the view of the Pacific Ocean um, every single day. And I'm thinking that isn't quite fair. <laughs> While there may not be an ocean view here, Susan does get to see something that many parents would envy her for, her daughter nearly every day as they tackle this task for which there is no manual. I don't know, somehow our differences and our strengths have made this work. 
as long as I don't comment about her hair or what she's wearing. <laughs> okay. We have a similar work ethic. I think that's really big. We will push and put in, you know, to the midnight hour without even questioning it. And that's hard to find people, pay people to put in that kind of, you know, effort. Except perhaps for this group of chickeners. Among them, you'll find architects, nurses, students and friends, even friends of friends. <laughs> they come together nearly every week for conversation and camaraderie, some snacks, and no matter what their sewing skills may be, to play some small role in the unfolding tale of City Girl Farm. They do get compensated for their stitches. We do our best to decide how much of a chicken they've stitched and then pay them accordingly. So what yeah, I'm trying to we do at? is Sally is very good at directing and teaching, but then she allows you to have like flexibility in your own creative look on things. And that's, I think, how you can get so much. And then if you're nervous, she's like, no, you're doing such a good job. And she's just very um, positive, which I think is great. <laughs> you get her today. <laughs> It's tempting to say that the chicks are in charge, and apparently I just did, but there are guys involved at the farm too, including Dave in the back room. He's the designated felter, transforming raw fibers like wool into fabric using the powers of water and heat in a process that falls somewhere between science and magic. Then there's John, recently added to the CGF team to help Sally keep a more vigilant eye on those pesky numbers. Definitely learning more this year, particularly about the business end of things, which was not my forte, never has been, um, but I'm learning a lot. So it's a beautiful mix of like production that needs to, to happen and um, just wanting to protect the culture of flexibility and spontaneity and, and creativity in the makings. We never get bored. I mean, it's like, you know, we'll look at each other and just kind of, really, you know, we get to do this? <laughs> We're having a lot of fun and I'm really, really thankful for the idea um, and just the joy and delight that it seems, that they seem to spread into the world.